All guests on Keel Heard via the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Political analyst Scott Hughes joins us for a little bit. Mr. Scott, welcome back to Keel. It's been a while. Hope you are well, sir. Good morning, Robert and Aaron. I'm doing well. Hope you all are well as well. Okay, tonight is the first debate. Joe Biden, Donald Trump. What are you watching for, Scott? I think I'm watching for what maybe a lot of America is watching for. We haven't seen these candidates either together or really, except for the last couple of weeks, on the campaign trail. So I think we're looking to see um, that, uh, in, in a way, it's a reset. What do they look like? What are they saying? But really, we're looking for that head-to-head competition. We're looking to see what happens when inevitably Trump goes after Biden and Biden goes after Trump. Have you heard my theory about the Biden campaign and day shifting or time shifting? Are you aware of my theory? If you have, what do you think of it? Well, I, I heard your theory. I, I think it. I think it plays into a larger narrative that 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 Trump has been putting out that Biden's not capable or have the energy. I mean, one thing Trump is that has to be careful for is he may have set very low expectations of of Joe Biden. He set this expectation that Joe can't physically do a debate. So. If Joe comes out today, whether they day shifted him or rested him or whatever, um, you know, in a way, Joe Biden may, may may look good by just showing up and getting through the debate. What are the th- top three things each will go after the other on? The top three things they'll go after each other on? Yeah, criti- um, criticize but, each other. Well, I, I think if you're the president, you're, you're going to go after um, Biden, that he's been part of the problem. One of Trump's big messages for years has been this swamp theme. And Biden has been around Washington 40, 45 years. And so um, he's going to tie Biden to this history. I think he's going to go after Joe for his, his, as we just said with Robert's comment, his health, his general approach to the way that um, that, they, that he might handle um, the, the presidency. And then third, I think Trump's going to generally go after Biden for his policy. What he, He's going to try to paint Biden as a liberal, as a socialist, as dangerous particularly in, in the realm of law and order. And how, I think and, if you're uh, Biden... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The th- I say if you're Biden, you're going to turn around and you're going to go up to Trump on what's clearly his biggest weakness right now, which is going to be the um, the coronavirus, how he's handled that situation. Polling polling shows that's one of the areas the president does, very, does not do very well on. I think you're going to go after um, Trump on generally how he's handling himself in the office. Is he presidential? That, that wraps up a lot of things. And I think most, most most recently now you're going to probably go after him on his taxes. Um, unfortunately for the president, that issue has broke late here, and it's going to be an issue that will come up tonight. Do you think at the end of the evening it's going to come down to who are you going to believe, me or your own lying eyes, in the sense that no matter what people see or watch, that the headlines for the evening have already been written by mainstream media, media by CNN, by, by MSNBC, by the three big networks, uh, that that Trump was horrible, Trump was lying, Trump was a bully, Trump was out of touch, and that Biden was cogent and, and cognitive and brilliant and in touch with the issues. In other words, they've already declared a winner. Is anything that happens on stage tonight really going to matter? Well, I'd like to think it does, Robert. I think, unfortunately, beyond the media, I think most of America has probably already written that headline. When you look at polling, both of them are sitting at least at 45%, fairly strong, um, Biden, depending on the poll, is a little higher. He may have a national lead, quote unquote. But, then, but the only polling that really matters is the polling in about seven states. And you, when you really break it down, you're really only looking at about 10 percent of the electorate right now. Where, where did these swing voters go? I heard somebody the other day describe them as the, the Reagan Democrats or the, the, the first Bush Republican. Where do those moderates on both sides go? And they're the only ones that might be moving right now. And, and I think a lot of this is going to be optics debates are very seldom about substance they're very seldom about what the person's foreign policy was we already know that today we can google it and look it up this is about optics it's about who wins the night and i think biden's going to try to win by looking competent by looking calm by by getting the president off off kilter the president's going to try to do what he has done before what he effectively did to hillary which is sort of drag this into a street fight where he is a new york street fighter and look like he's tough and look like he's going to take out his opponent if, in your mind, the election will come down to maybe 10% or so of people right now across the country who are undecided, what do you think will decide it for them? It's, it's not as though ideologically they're anywhere 
They're anywhere near each other, no closer than the parties. And bluntly speaking, my thought is if you don't know that, if you haven't figured out yet what who, who, who you're for, you're, you're just not paying attention or you're dumb. Well, I, I think when you look at this election, even the, quote, undecided 10 percent, my gut is most people know today who they're going to support. The problem is that 10 percent in the middle doesn't want to pull the lever either way. We had the same problem four years ago with Hillary. You had a lot of Democrats. Ironically, it was women four years ago, suburban women who didn't. The post polling showed us didn't like Hillary. And so they wanted to vote for Hillary. They wanted to vote for a woman, but they just couldn't do it. And some people stayed away and some people went and decided, I can't vote for her. I'm going to vote for Trump. And he ends up winning and running this this amazing gauntlet through seven states, which turns into actually a fairly large electoral college victory, even while losing the nation, the national count because of the way we vote on the coast. I, I think we're back to the same way, Robert. I think there's a lot of people that deep down know who they want to vote for. They understand the policies. They understand what the Republican Party stands for. They understand what the Democratic platform is about. But the candidates, they don't like the candidates. There's a lot of Democrats that don't like Joe Biden because he's not the best candidate they could have put up after four years. But then they look across the aisle and they see Trump and they just can't vote for him right now. And then there's many Republicans, and I call them the George Bush Republicans. They don't really like their candidate, uh, Trump, but they cannot vote for Joe Biden. And yet they still are winning over here with things like Supreme Court justices and tax reform. So you've got a very strange election where I don't really think either voting body, except for some hardcore on the right and left, truly love their candidate. They're trying to find a reason to vote for the candidate. Get out your popcorn and your beer. Going to be a good one. It, it, it should be. It should be an interesting debate. This will be the one that's probably the most watched. Um, I think Robert, he, he's had a long going debate of we'll ha whether we'll have two or three. I think tonight we'll tell you whether you'll have additional debates after this. I think it should be some much-watched TV. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask, if Biden does well tonight, i.e. doesn't tip over or nod off, does he <laughs> show up for two and three, or does he just rest on the laurels, so to speak? My gut is Biden does show up for all three, Robert. At the end of the day, I think, mm -hmm. I think Biden has less of a risk by showing up because, unfortunately, as I said earlier, unfortunately, Trump has set such a low bar for Biden. All he has to do is show up and survive. And as you said, then the press headlines can say Biden does well. Um, I think Biden has a better chance to get Trump out speaking. Um, one of the issues with Donald Trump and his supporters will defend it. Uh, they call it entertainment sometimes. But oftentimes you just have to put a microphone in front of Donald Trump and you will get amazing sound bites. And in the end, I think Biden benefits by having the free debate only because he gets a chance to show himself as being competent. Um, and, and quite frankly, uh, many debate coaches, I've seen some breakdown of this tonight. One of the key strategies for Biden might be to simply use Trump's own lines against him.